Welcome back to our series on Australian dinosaurs. Last time we looked at Australovanita, Diamantinosaurus and Minmi, and in this video we'll be featuring three more species first discovered in Australia that all present us with a fascinating glimpse at the Mesozoic world of dinosaurs. The first of these is Mutabarasaurus langdoni. Named after the town of Mutabara where the first fossils of this animal were discovered, as well as the man who found them, Doug Langdon, Mutabarasaurus was an ornithopod dinosaur able to grow to lengths of around 8 metres and heights of about 2.5. Upon the original discovery of this species in 1963, Mutabarasaurus actually held the title of the most complete dinosaur to ever be found in Australia. This would later be claimed by Cumbarasaurus, however, which we mentioned in the last video. The exact position of this species within ornithopods has, as seems to be a theme in these videos, been challenged quite a bit over the years, with an original classification as an iguanodontid ornithopod, which later became questioned by other studies. Alternate suggestions include a placement within the rhabdodontids, or a slightly more derived than this group. Mutabarasaurus was potentially capable of both quadrupedal and bipedal locomotion, and one of the most notable characteristics of this dinosaur is the unusual looking snout. The snout features a large hollow bump structure, the purpose of which is not known for certain, although it was possibly used as some sort of display system, or maybe to enhance the calls of these creatures. Many other ideas have also been suggested. You may remember Mutabarasaurus being featured in the Walking with Dinosaurs episode Spirits of the Ice Forest, and there's also another Australian dinosaur species that was made more well known due to this episode, Lianosaura. Another fascinating animal, this early Cretaceous Age species was first uncovered in Dinosaur Cove in Victoria. Lianosaura was a small creature, reaching lengths of between about 1 to 2 metres, and a height of only 40 centimetres. Once again, the classification of this organism has been an absolute nightmare, with the species being suggested by several different analyses to be placed at a variety of locations within Ornithischia. These include the original identity as a Hypsilophodontid, small ornithopods from early Cretaceous Europe, as well as a basal Iguanodontian ornithopod, a non-Iguanodontian ornithopod, or as a basal Neonithischian. The location at which the fossils of Lianosaura were first uncovered, in Dinosaur Cove, revealed that this species would have been living within the Antarctic Circle at the time they existed in the early Cretaceous. There would have been a much warmer climate here during the early Cretaceous than there is today, but this still means that during the winter these animals would have had to survive through periods of complete darkness, possibly for a few months at a time. The anatomy of Lianosaura features some unusual traits, perhaps the most prominent of which is the remarkably long tail. The tails of these animals were actually three times the length of the rest of the body, making them one of the longest tails relative to body size of any dinosaur known, as well as having more vertebrae than many of its relatives. There's been quite a bit of speculation on what they could have been used for, with suggestions ranging from display structures, to a kind of scarf the animals could wrap around themselves to keep warm in the cold dark winters, or even to aid in swimming. It was also noticed that the eye sockets of Lielinosaura were particularly enlarged compared to the size of the skull, and therefore it was suggested that this was an adaptation to the periods of darkness these animals had to face, with larger eyes and optic nerves improving their ability to see in low light conditions. However, these large eyes have also been proposed to be due to the individual the fossil came from having been a juvenile at the time it died, since younger animals generally tend to have proportionally bigger eyes than adults. There's also been a bit of a dispute over which fossil remains can actually even be referred to Lianosaura, with some paleontologists arguing that the original material that was first described, consisting of a skull roof and an upper jaw, actually belonged to two different species, and that the material preserving the long tails cannot confidently be assigned to either of these other bones. However, other researchers are confident that the material likely does all originate from the same species, but what would be really nice is if a more complete fossil of this dinosaur, preserving all the different parts we have so far, was discovered, bringing a conclusion to this disagreement. Finally, there's Osraptor. The name of this dinosaur comes from the word Aussie, unsurprisingly, as well as the Latin word for thief or robber, raptor. The paleontologists who named the animal also stated that you can therefore metaphorically think of Osraptor as the lizard of Oz. Yes, they actually wrote that in the paper. The history of discovery of this creature goes back a while, with the original fossils being located by a group of schoolboys from Scotch College in 1966. This material consisted of just the lower part of a tibia, and after showing their find to a professor at the University of Western Australia, a replica was made and sent to the Natural History Museum in London. Here, the fossil was determined to possibly be from a turtle, 
However, years later, once the specimen had actually been removed from the rock it was encased in, a re-examination by scientists at the Western Australia Museum revealed that it was in fact from a dinosaur. Osraptor was therefore named and described in 1998, but due to the incredibly incomplete nature of the organism, it could only be said to be some sort of theropod, which kind of theropod was unclear. It has been classified as an avitheropod, but also as an abelisauroid, in which case it could be the oldest known abelisauroid, as Osraptor dates back to the Middle Jurassic, actually making it one of the oldest known dinosaurs from Australia too. This creature was likely about 2 metres in total length, based on the size of the tibia, and a lot of the reconstructions you see of this animal are based on the assumption that it is indeed an abelisauroid, using comparisons with other members of this group to determine what the animal could have looked like. Hopefully more complete remains of this mysterious dinosaur can be found in the future, adding more detail to our view of this ancient time. Well, there we have it, a selection of a few of the wonderful and fascinating dinosaurs that were first discovered in Australia. Of course, there are many other incredible species of dinosaur from Australia that all tell their own unique stories of a time long ago, but hopefully these videos were able to give you a brief overview of the wide variety of dinosaur groups that can be found in the rocks of this country. I really hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you would like to find out more about our world, its history and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.